I haven't spent a lot of time on the bench in the last two weeks. Uh, fortunately, I've been ahead of my videos, so I've been pumping those out slowly. But I need to start shooting some more material here. Uh, unfortunately, I used every stick of wood I had this winter, so I've got to. Uh, I've been doing a lot of outdoor yard work this last week. So I didn't really spend much time at the bench. Uh, tons of leaves. Our oak trees don't give up their leaves till fall, so even though I had it fairly well cleaned up, I gotta clean it up all over again, leaves and twigs and stuff. Uh, enough where I can get the mower through it anyway. Uh, which is gonna come up pretty soon in a week or two. So, I gotta get going on my wood harvest. Because, um... Normally I do it just do it in the fall, but it's when it gets cooler in the fall, but it didn't get cool last uh, fall until it was winter <laughs> um, Didn't have a lot of in-between weather to do that heavy work So I'm gonna try to do some heavy work this spring before it gets hot out Try to get a little start on my wood But I got a whole wood crib to fill And I've been looking at this old dog this amp actually does work, but one channel, the driver kind of gets real hot. This one I got a, a little extra heat sink on here. Whereas on the other channel, it doesn't do that. Although it doesn't really have much distortion. The uh, idle current doesn't really track well in either channel, though, in terms of how well the uh, bias circuit works. So you end up not biasing it, you know, as intense as I'd like to, because they they're just not, don't track that well. I have been using this little guy. Now that I know how to use it. And I found most of the black capacitors are good. But most of these pale blue ones, and I'm going to have to go through it again and start marking them. I haven't been through all of them. You know, have a real pattern, just go through the whole thing. But most of the pale blue ones are sub-spec. Uh, most of the pale blue ones on this show a high ESR. Usually not real bad. They're mostly they're just right over the borderline of what they should be. And there's a couple that are worse than that. So I may give some attention to this old dog and get it out of here. I want to. I've actually been thinking about this as a candidate for the chip amp. You know, if if I did buy new chips for that uh, those chip amp boards, but unfortunately the way the heatsink's configured. It, there's no easy way to put them in here. I'd have to like flip the heatsink or something crazy. I'll be thinking about it though. Maybe look at the heatsink's totally different. No. Nah. Yep. I have to think about it. So this amp's been hacked about. You know, I replaced the speaker terminals with some more robust ones because they were broken up. Hit the the uh, one of my drill bits hit the uh, speaker protection relay, so I had to replace that. Which was no big deal because the contacts were bad in it anyway. I already had to clean the old one and it was kind of iffy anyway. So that was really no big loss. Well, I didn't really get one that fit exactly. That's why it's hoovering above the board a little bit. And jumpered into it. So it's a sad old amp. The schematic is kind of crazy. I'd show you, but it's really hard to read. Basically the outputs are Darlington up with the driver. It's like got like a third Darlington trailing off of one side of the output. It's kind of strange. I'll have to look into that better and see what they were thinking. But you know, the circuit's nothing special really. A lot of capacitors in it. And re replace all them caps. I don't know if it's really worth the effort. The PC board, you know, has got some burns on it and um, had a spill. That was the original problem with this amp. Somebody spilled a beer into it. It was my girlfriend's amp, ex girlfriend's amp. And I forgot over the years what the story was on it and I powered it up one day and hey it worked so I just started using it but then slowly trouble started creeping in and that whole saga has been recorded in several videos well they're pretty far back now though um, I did a video on this Yamaha I did a couple videos on this Yamaha way way back so I don't know it works well enough to use but it's kind of I'm seriously considering putting a couple chip amps in this amp and just blowing off the output you know rebuilding the output all these capacitors and Probably half the resistors are kind of scorched up and out of spec too. I'd have to really check everything to get this amp running properly. And it's just really not worth it. I do like the way the uh, 
front panel works when it works correctly. There's also an open in the front panel that's a Phantom that's uh, this chassis is known for. I read about it when I was reading up on this amp. It's pretty common for the front panel to do Phantom opens on you, yeah, one channel to the other. And this amp got most of that flushed out because I cleaned all the controls and it's been worked over a lot, you know. But what do you do with an old Japanese amp that's of marginal quality? 